Welcome back to Let's Play Shovel Knight. Today we tackle the second stage that I actually showed off in the quick look at, Spectre Knight. Dig in! Nope. Gotta check, man, you never know. So these are interesting because you can hit them once, then bounce off of them going up. You can actually hit them twice to get them higher, which means you can do stuff like that. Gotta be real careful of them frogs. These frogs do not give a crap about anybody. Saw a little skull in the wall? Saw it? Gotta look for that crap, man. You can bounce off of the gravestones. Anything? Nothing? Ugh! Ah. Okay, so I can indeed break the top one. Mm -hmm. uh. I've never gotten this chest! Because I always fall, and then I can't bounce off either of these guys because I kill them like a dumb butt. Then you can't get back up. Okay, there's a ghost. You cannot kill the ghosts. You can turn them invisible for but a moment. I should have smacked the right wall, but I guess it doesn't matter. I wonder what happened if I hit the guy's, if, like, if I gave the guy his skull back. Sup, big guy? Yeah, look at me now, I'm behind you. Oh, crap. These frogs, man. Electric frogs! Nope, gonna wait. Gonna wait. Gonna wait and do some squats. Thankfully, you can still, like, dive jump on them while they're electric. One th I think another thing that I really like about this game was is... I shouldn't say was. Is that... It actually has a very, very high skill ceiling. Like, you can get way better at this game. Oh, wait. Like, just by playing it a bunch, you can get way, way, way better at this game. Dang it. Dang it. Fine, I'll go this way. Thought there was a pit there. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do instead? Ooh, a place to go down. And now we're on a race. We got hit, but it's all right. I'll never get that money. Okay, now clearly there is something off to the side. Dang it. There's a lot of times when you can go over the top of the map.
Oh, blind running. Anything in that one? Nope. Ah, and then we got another new mechanic in the stage. Another neat thing is, I suppose, kind of Mega Man-like. You can just crush him, if you're really... If you can't be bothered. Hey, frog. Where are you going, frog? Get back here. Oh, no. I suppose it is kind of Mega Man-like, though, in that each stage does have several new mechanics added to it. And then later on, still, you'll see the mecha various mechanics combined in various ways. I probably didn't need to jump to break each one of those, but whatevs... No, you come back here. And I need your skull! And now I'm trapped. Shovel ho! Nope, going up. Another place that you're actually um, kind of restricted not being able to get too often, and it holds Chester. Ah, oh, the phase locket. Arguably one of the most overpowered weapons in the game, but honestly, I, like, never use it. Playing my game's legit. It does have its uses, even for me, though. Just in a time when I know, like, there's not going to be an easy way for me to handle or take care of something. And I know I'm just going to take a bunch of hits. Because what the phase locket does is it grants you very, very temporary invincibility. Oh, be careful with these, by the way. Because you can break them. That's actually useful. Or I shouldn't say useful, but there is a... There's an achievement in the game for, I think, beating a level and breaking all of the checkpoints. It takes more than one hit, though, so you can't just break it accidentally. Yep, you're a guy. Oh man, free stuff up here. Oh, you can go above this! And that's how you get to that. I forgot this was the next room coming up. Can I jump over that? No, I can't. Man, that one was hidden. That works. Good to know what'll happen to me, though. Okay, now which one of these is real, which one of these is fake? That one is real, or that one is fake, and that one is fake. I think the one on the far left was a fake pit as well. You just hold on there, big guy. I'm gonna... I'll be with you in a minute. Gonna stand inside of your hitbox here and just kind of smear you. The phase locket doesn't grant you very long invincibility because if you see here, and there it's all. It doesn't last for very long, but you can use it again while it's still active, essentially granting you extended invincibility. Um, that will kind of eat up your magic pretty quick, but you can also then extend your magic bar, so it can kind of get broken from the end of the game. Okay, nothing ever com good comes from breaking those.
Huh. Making sort of blind jumps. And it's still safe to continue. That looks breakable. And it was. And I'm quite certain we have arrived at Spectre Night. Up yours, Spectre Knight. You don't speak ill of Shield Knight. No! Okay, so the technique I've found to fight this guy most easily is to stand on the left edge of this platform. Hit him when he floats over to you, and otherwise you can generally dodge over his... ...sight when he throws. I have to be careful, though, because some of his attacks will still potentially hit you. If you hit him right away when he does that... Dang it. No! No! If you hit him right away when he teleports, like, right next to you... Dang it. Uh, he'll generally teleport away pretty quickly. Or at least move to the other side of the arena. He does kill them after a time. He will re-summon them if you don't do enough damage to him fast enough. And it is even gonna be... Yeah, there we go. He turned the lights off. But he doesn't have much life left, so it doesn't matter. hi -oh! Specter Knight down. And we see a rather large red chest, and that is also the final knight of this section of the map, which means... Another dream of Shield Knight. And you gotta save her, but there's so many dudes! Oh, and then the night guys. Just kill as many as you can. It'll, um, ease everything up on you. Ah! Kill as many dudes as you can, and it'll ease up the actual grabbing of her when she gets down all the way. Hmm, a roaming gem? Well, let me turn in my stuff, and then perhaps we'll tackle that roaming gem. Oh my. I do believe every Shield Knight dream, aside from the first, you can- you will actually get a meal ticket! Kind of guaranteeing you an amount of health refill each time. I don't know what that is! But apparently it was good, because it did increase my health! Go ahead and increase my magic a little bit. I'll increase my health once. I don't really have anything else to buy. At least not right now.
I said I wasn't gonna speed up text, but, like, this is also the same text you've seen already. So I am, and I don't know what that was either, but I guess we'll find out eventually. I'll save the little bit of magic, or uh, the little bit of money I have left, because soon now a new store will open up. And I suppose that'll do us for as far as we are now. So let's go take a look. I've still got both my chalices full, so we don't need to stop there. We've opened up a new section of the map over here. And what a glorious section it is. But first... Oh my, this looks interesting. Just a little bit of an area on Prime Door Keep. Collect as much money as you can. Um, those books, by the way, they will continue to, um, or I shouldn't say continue, but they will refresh themselves. If you hit them again, even if they're already open. And it's actually a very short little area here, because this is the end. I do like that there's actually a fair amount to do even between levels. Be it the little random things showing up here, or other areas like these, say, gem stages, or the question mark that you see right there to the right. And there's even the gem down there, so I suppose, until next time, everyone, I'll probably tackle this gem stage here, and then perhaps open the path to the next town. Until then, everyone.